Okay. So the question was why we do have uh, those uh, null rows in the Jacobian for the three link planner robot. Let's see why easily on the <clears throat> on the board. This is a 3D view of a planner robot and uh, any kind of joint movement that I can imagine is a rotation around the x-axis, okay? All aligned with the z. It means that uh, the velocities that I can achieve at the Etna factor are all lying on the plane. I cannot obtain component out of the plane. This is interpretation for the linear velocity, so for uh, uh, row three of the Jacobian. Concerning uh, four and five, the angular component, well, easily, the only component that I can achieve for the angular velocity is aligned with Z. I cannot rotate around any other axis that is not one of the three axes of the joint, the three joint. Okay, so this is the meaning of the zero. And then uh, one line is constant, it is one, and this is, uh, it will be constant only for very simple structure. It means that uh, the angular velocity of the end effector is simply the sum of the three angular velocities, okay, of the each individual joint. It's the sum with the weight one. Now, here it is written, if the position only is of interest. Let us consider the Jacobian as uh, an object that we can uh, uh, extract from uh, the lines depending on the application. I can be interesting only in move in the position without caring about the orientation. And as I need only the first three lines. For example, I want to move the end effector from one place to another, and I don't care about the orientation. So in my algorithm, I will use the first three lines okay, of a generic Jacobian with you know, non-null uh, rows. And here, I may also, I should also start considering the fact that here I can notice that I have a Jacobian with the more columns than lines. So if I'm only interested in moving the robot on a plane, I don't care about the orientation. I should start thinking that I do have three joints, but I need to um, compose only a velocity of two components because the, the direction going out of the plane here is not involved. By more degrees of freedom than of uh, more uh, degrees of freedom of the structure than degrees of freedom of my then task dimension. Sorry, not the degrees of freedom. Then the dimension of the task. But when I say the redundancy of a robot, we will develop this concept uh, in, the, in the following. Well, now I start seeing something that is more than a definition. A redundant robot is a robot in which I have more degrees in freedom than dimension of the application. And so my Jacobian is low rectangular, okay? It's low rectangular. And for example, I just give you an hint of what we are going to meet in in the in the future. Not not so far in the future, in the near future. Okay. So for example, if I have uh, only the position, so v x v. And my Jacobian is a Jacobian of a structure with, uh, I don't know, uh, eight degrees of freedom. So this is uh, three by n, this is n by one, with n 
equal 8. Okay, I have a lot of degrees of freedom. Now, I may ask to myself, what is the value of Q dot that I have to assign to the motors in order to have uh, those velocity components at the end effect? This is the question that we will pose to ourselves in order to start developing a controller for the end effect. Let us imagine that I want to go on a straight line and I want only this component. So this pen now is the velocity of the end effect, okay? It means that uh, I do know the value of uh, the left-hand side of the equation and I want to know what kind of velocity I have to assign to the joint in order to achieve this end effect of velocity. I should consider the very important aspect that, uh, let me rewrite it so I underline, The Jacobian is configuration dependent. Let us consider my arm. I start from here and I assign certain velocities to the joint. In order to keep, to stay in a straight line, if you see, my configuration is changing. It means that uh, the Jacobian is changing and I need to compute at every simple time if I'm a in discrete time controller, now this is continuous time, but instantly I have to compute the correct velocity. From the mathematical aspect, let us start consider this as, well, a linear system of, a system of linear equations with uh, more uh, unknowns than equations. It's the same from the mathematical aspect. Okay, and we will uh, arrive to that uh, later on. The Jacobian for an anthropomorphic robot. Well, if you if you look at the, the symbolic expression of the Jacobian, that's exactly the same as the previous one, because it is simply with the no, correct index for the variables, but. The, the three are rotational, so it's actually the same. Now, the position of the frames is given by those expressions. And the unit vector of Z now are not constant anymore. If I look at the structure, only the first one always stay the same. Okay? The other two change in space. You have to, to visualize the, this vector Z1 and Z2 by changing all the three joints. So they change their position in, uh, in the space. Okay, and this is the expression of the Jacobian. Now, I do not have any line that is uh, null, but uh, I have three degrees of freedom, so I can easily understand that I, I, I cannot achieve whatever linear and angular velocity I want at the end effect with my structure with three degrees of freedom. If I compute the rank of this matrix, it is three. Obviously, the three columns cannot be more than three. Okay? We can introduce one prismatic join and add the, 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 the spherical wrist. Now, the symbolic expression is a little bit more complex. Uh, the only thing that I want to under, underline here to stress is the third uh, column of the Jacobian. Because due to the fact that I have uh, a prismatic joint, here this is Z2 for the positional part and zero for the orientational part, okay? But this is something that I don't have to remember by heart, I just have to go here, come back in this page and verify that for a prismatic joint, this is uh, the corresponding column of the Jacobian. Okay. 
Now, that's all. Uh, I, I can put it here symbolically. It's a, rather, it's a rather complex, but in fact, I will not do it symbolically. I will do it numerically, and we will do it numerically. And we will write the codes that will be exactly the same for this uh, robotic structure, for this one, for whatever, as long as I have a DH table. Okay, now, in the beginning, this is the geometric Jacobian, and we define the geometric Jacobian, we now have the instrument to build the geometric Jacobian, okay? Of course, we don't know how to, to use it, and we have to wait uh, until uh, the end of this, uh, uh, of this topic in order to use the Jacobian as a tool for our control laws. Okay, but now we still have to to study other analytical aspect in part analytical Jacobian. It is a different version of the Jacobian. Let's see what an analytical Jacobian is. Now, this is. Uh, an alternative and let us see what's meaning an alternative why in what in what respect is an alternative i do know that my direct kinematics or the position can be expressed as a function that map from the joint to the end effector position okay just a function three-dimensional function it is nonlinear. There are a lot of uh, sinus and cosinus uh, in this uh, function. Then I do know that uh, I can do the same for the orientation. However, the orientation. Now we should talk about uh, the orientation because up to now with the geometric Jacobian, I kept the orientation a little bit uh, on a side. But the orientation is always uh, more subtle with respect to the position. We need to think a little bit more when we uh, work with the orientation of, uh, of the rigid balance. My function from Q to the orientation, well, is not unique. I, I studied uh, several orientation representations. Okay, I studied orientation representation for Euler angles. In the other angles that are minimal orientation representation, we know that uh, there are 12 different Euler angles. We just, I mean, focus our attention on two of them, but there are 12. And then we uh, studied the axis angle and the unit quadrature for parameter representation. It means that here I may have uh, a function of three or four elements, okay? But I'm, I'm able to compute those, this function. Now, one may say, okay, but I don't care about uh, the geometric construction of the Jacobian that brought us to the linear and angular velocities. Why don't we simply make a partial derivative of uh, those two functions? And it's true, in my, if I make, uh, I mean, the derivative with respect to time uh, of uh, P, I have P dot E equal, well, the, de uh, the derivative of a function of a function, sorry. So the first part is the partial derivative of uh, P with respect to Q. And then the partial derivative of Q with respect to time that we already define as Q dot, okay? Now, we do remember from uh, last year class that if I make the partial derivative of uh, a function, um, a multivariable uh, function, I do have uh, a matrix as output. And this matrix in, a, in, a, in a, uh, calculus is defined as Jacobian. Okay, so the, the word Jacobian is not new to you. And 
each element of the matrix is uh, the line first line is the first component of the function so the partial derivative of p1 with respect the columns is uh, the correspond the variable increasing index of the variable so uh, partial derivative one respect to one partial derivative of one respect to two and so on if i go down on the rows is uh, i change the index of the the function and keep the index of the variable now it turns out that for the position if i follow this street i exactly obtain the same as the the position of the dramatic jacob okay so we may have skipped all the linear part and just say okay just make a, a a normal derivative to the symbolic expression and you will achieve the position of jacob however when i make the time derivative of the orientation representation i do not write here omega e i'm using a different symbol i'm using the symbol that the same symbol that i use for the orientation with a dot okay let us just consider one aspect we have here different phi, different possible orientation representation. If I make the derivative of those vectors, I have, uh, I, we saw four different representations, okay? Uh, let me say three, Euler angles, axis angle, and the uh, and, uh, union quadrant now. If I make the time derivative of the three, I cannot achieve the same angular velocity, but physically, this object, I mean, is exhibiting one angular velocity. It means clearly that the time derivative of this guy is not necessarily the angular velocity, okay? And also, I have uh, four elements in some cases. So clearly, the time derivative of the orientation representation is not the angular velocity. But I may be I, I may be interested in working with this quantity instead of the angular velocity. Is it depends? Now I do use a different symbol for the left hand side. When I use the geometric Jacobian here. I have the letter V for velocity with subscript E and the factor. Now, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> now I use <coughs> I use X dot. Okay. And this is different from the geometric Jacobian since we will uh, see a small example just to understand a little bit the relationship of this aspect. Now, can I compute a transformation from phi dot e to omega e? Yes, this can be done. And here we just see one of those transformations in order to understand a little bit uh, one aspect, uh, subtle aspect of this transformation. If I use uh, the current frame rotation Z, Y, Z, I can uh, extract the angular velocity by each of the component of the time derivative of the three angles. And for example, for the first one, I can notice that the angular velocity is aligned with z with the amplitude phi dot, that is uh, the first angle. Then the second uh, is aligned with uh, now this change of phi, so with this vector here, and with amplitude theta dot, and so on. But this is, can be done 
I may have uh, a transformation from phi dot e to omega e, to the angular velocity, by means of a matrix, in this case it's 3 by 3, that is function of phi and theta, so it's function of the orientation. But worse than that, this matrix is not always full rank. This is another side effect of the representation singularity of the Euler angles. It means that I must pay attention when I do use a minimal representation of orientation, not only in a kinematic way, but also in a differential kinematic way. Okay. Now, this slide represents the, 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 the important aspect of uh, omega and phi dot. Omega has a clear physical meaning. It's the angular velocity, the way we studied in physics. Okay? However, the integral of omega doesn't have a physical meaning. Phi dot does not have a, a physical meaning, but its integral is the orientation, is phi. We do need to integrate the velocities, yes, because we count for position orientation. So we will differentiate the integrate the variables. A simple example is given by this, uh, is the following. Just two rotation with the same integral but different final orientation. So the same integral uh, mathematically. Let us consider first uh, a rotation of one second of 90 degrees around Z followed by a rotation of one second of 90 degrees around Y. And then we just reverse uh, the axis around which make the rotation of 90 degrees for one second. If I make the integral of uh, this angular velocity, the integral uh, is actually the same. I rotated 90 degrees uh, around uh, x and y, this is the integral. However, if I physically apply those two rotations, this is what I obtain. t equals zero. I start my uh, couple of rotations. The first one is a, a rotation of 90 degrees around x. So if you look at this cube here, now is 90 degrees rotated around x. Let's take this. Uh, One second, I, I upload the... I need to upload the file.
no, la, la, la pagina è sbagliata. Un attimo, dove? Ok. Ok. So, first rotation of 90 degrees around X. So counterclockwise around X. And here I arrive with the cube in that position. And then uh, counterclockwise around Y. And this is the, the final position of my cube. Okay? I just reverse the order. First, 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise around Y. And then around x and this is the final orientation of the cube different one each other so the integral was the same but the physical of the movement is different so it means that uh, omega cannot be integrated this is just one single simple example to to verify that omega cannot be integrated okay What is the relationship between the analytical and geometrical? Yes, I can uh, compute the transformation matrix because the position is the same. So I have the three by three identity matrix here for the position part. I have uh, the three by three transformation matrix that we can compute for each of the orientation and representation. Three by three null matrices here. So I can compute the relationship between the linear and angular velocities and the time derivative of the orientation configuration. In the end, I do have two almost equivalent objects, the geometric and the analytical Jacobian. The geometric uh, provides me or is better to be used with variables with physical meanings with strong physical meanings the analytical is to be used with uh, variables that are the differential variables of the operational space ones now we have those two tools and we will see uh, later on what are the uh, differences okay what are the different use that we are going to do of those two options okay now let us start talking about kinematic singularities is a concept that will uh, will be it is quite important in, in robotics. I'll try to, to make a simple example. Let us consider our nice two link uh, planar robot. And uh, <clears throat> let us write the, the uh, draw, I mean the Jacobian, the position Jacobian. I want to write it down in terms of JP1 and JP2, the two um, column, only for position. So this 
for me is two by two. I only care about x, y, and the joint one and two, of course. Okay. So now U is J1. We verified that this is uh, JP1 and this is JP2. Okay. So now, if I ask you, may I obtain at the end of it only X and Y? So the uh, X. May I obtain any value for V, A, X, and Y in this configuration? What is the reasoning that I have to do? Okay, I know that this is Q dot 1 multiplied by JP1 plus Q dot 2 multiplied by JP2. JP2. A JP1. I do remember for geometry that actually this is a linear combination of two vectors. The weight of this linear combination are the joint velocity. So now, in order to understand if I can achieve here any direction, I have to consider those two vectors and simply verify if they are or not a base for, in this case, R2. And we do remember from uh, geometry that if the two vectors are not aligned, they are a base, actually. It's not orthonormal, of course. It's not torto, it's not normal. It's a base now, but I can achieve any VE that I want in the other factor by prob prob eh, properly selecting the Q.1 and Q.2. Okay? Can you see a situation where this is not possible? where the two JP1 and JP2 are aligned. This and this are aligned. Just try to visualize the robot by moving Q Q1 and Q2. Is there a configuration where the two robots are aligned? I just draw Another configuration, maybe if it's not clear the meaning of it. In this configuration, this is JP1 and this is JP2. This one is orthogonal to this and this is orthogonal to this. In this configuration, I can still obtain any kind of velocity at the end of it. Can you see a configuration? Also remotely, if you want, you can make a draw and share your screen if you want to share your idea. Any, anyone that wants to, to try? Now, in, in order to help you in replying, I draw this additional configuration. If you can, uh, you can notice here that uh, the two vectors exhibit a very small angle between them. Okay, still they are a base. From the geometric aspect, still they are a base. But here, 
they were a little bit more, you know, orthogonal one each other. So can you achieve a configuration when they are aligned? No, Z qui non c'è. Uh, it says when they are on the same uh, axis. Uh, more or less, not on the same axis. The intuition maybe is there, but not the... So it's not the same axis. Here is when uh, theta 2 is equal to 0. No matter theta 1. In this case, if I move... Uh, If I apply a velocity to theta 1 or theta 2, instantaneously, I only can reach the tangent to this point with both joints. I cannot obtain a velocity in that direction, instantaneously. If I look at the Jacobian, the Jacobian is rank 1, because the two uh, columns are aligned. So the definition of a kinematic singularity from the mathematical aspect is a loss of rank of the Jacob. And now we will give a several interpretation of this. Actually, this is not the only configuration because I can also have uh, another configuration for a planar Turing robot. This is theta two is equal pi. Okay, it's the same. In the slides, I have some better draws to, for those uh, configuration. Kinematic singularities from the mathematical aspect, the definition is a loss of rank of J. The meaning of the of this, uh, this uh, mathematical aspect from the robotics aspect is huge. First, I, uh, I notice a loss of mobility. A loss of mobility means exactly what we are seeing here. I can go on the green direction, but I cannot go on the red direction. So this is a loss of mobility. I can have an infinite solution to the kinematic problem. We will see later on with the spherical wrist. It's better. And then uh, the last bullet, uh, you don't have now the instrument to understand it. We will see better uh, later on. Okay? But the problem with uh, when I'm close to a, a kinematic singularity from the control aspect is huge. And I can, ex I can experience very large joint velocities with a very small and effector velocity. Now you don't have the, 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 the instrument to understand it, but you will understand this valid later on. Of course, it is here for sake of completeness. I can have... Uh, Singularities, I will always have singularities uh, at the boundaries of the reachable workspace. What does it mean? If my robot is all stretched, I'm always in a kinematic singularity. Okay, it's something that I think it can be demonstrated, I'm not sure, but I, I never work in really at the boundary okay, of my workspace. I always work a little bit with you. Then I have singularities inside the workspace. And one can imagine, well, but if you do know that it is a loss of rank of J, you can uh, compute the determinant of J, that is function of Q, and verify when this is null. And those will be the Q in which you have a kinematic singularity. This is practically not doable, okay? In theory, yes, in practice, no. So I have to uh, coexist with the idea 
that I have kinematic singularities within the workspace and I do not know where they are. Okay? Another reason why I cannot easily map the kinematic singularities or I cannot easily handle the kinematic singularities is that sometimes my movement is uh, in so-called sensor driven, so in real time. I do not know in advance where I will move my robot. And if I have a kinematic singularity within the whole space, this can have dramatic consequence if I don't take it properly into account. Now, I don't have the instrument to, 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 to fully understand those concepts, but we will make simulations and we will further elaborate this concept. Okay? This is just a... Now, this is exactly what I draw a kinematic singularity for a tuning panel robot. But in this case, I can uh, obtain it simply by computing the determinant because it's a two by two matrix. It's very simple. The determinant is uh, uh, the di diagonal minus the, the product of the diagonal minus the product of the uh, anti-diagonal for a two by two. And as you can notice, it is function of the configuration. I can say, okay, when does uh, this guy is null in those two situations? Okay, and this is what we already saw. And this is exactly the, the draw that I made, but here is with a three-link planar robot. It, it doesn't change. Here I have, uh, I have uh, three uh, lines parallel one each other, so the draw does not represent very well. And here I have a, a kinematic singularity for a three-link planar robot where for the last wine, uh, the wine, the last one, I made a P rotation, okay? So here if I made a P rotation. The first one is uh, absolutely uh, indifferent. It's five, could be any number. Still, I'm in a kinematic singularity. If I have a spherical wrist, I can understand uh, the singularities. Uh, I can better understand the singularities. For example, the coupling, the study of the kinematic, of the Jacobian. Uh, I will not go into the details of this page. Let me say that for this structure, uh, the kinematic singularities can be easily uh, identified. And I want only to verify the kinematic singularity for the for the wrist. Now, in this configuration, the wrist is in a kinematic singularity for the orientation. Can I verify it? Yes, let me show you. Now, the, the, the problem with the board is that uh, I cannot uh, clear all, otherwise I lose my the PDF. Uh, you cannot see the PDF, but they are here. I have the PDF of my slides. And every time I have to upload again, and I cannot increase. Uh, I haven't find the way to increase the dimension of the eraser. It's not very convenient. Okay, so now Okay, now this is my my uh, spherical wrist. Now I'm interested in the angular velocities. So let us uh, draw the contribution for each, this vector, this vector, and this vector. In this case, for the angular velocity, I just sum the angular velocity contribution. And clearly, I can reach uh, any 
point in the plane where the three vectors lie in this moment, but I cannot go in that direction. So I cannot assign instantaneously a velocity, angular velocity around that direction. Here I can also appreciate uh, the first bullet of uh, the, pro the issues with the kinematic singularity, the uh, infinite solution to the kinematic problem. If I want to apply, if I want to stay still without any uh, angular velocity for this configuration, I may want to, to come out with a very strange or stupid solution. Joint four with a velocity in that direction, a joint five with the same amplitude in the opposite direction, the end effect will not move. Okay? And obviously, you can do it for uh, infinite values. So this is just an example. Of course, it's more difficult to visualize for a generic, uh, for a generic uh, structure, but, but for this structure, it's very easy to, to visualize it. Okay? Okay, let us uh, verify also the singularities for the anthropomorphic robot. I mean, no, not you, no, it's not this one, for this guy here, okay? I can compute uh, the determinant of the Fukushi only for the positional part, and this is, can be done symbolically because it's a, a small degree of freedom structure, which is null for those two values. In this case, is a theta three equals zero or pi, but this is a little bit more complex. Since this is a very simple structure, I can try to visualize the configuration that is uh, embedded in this equation, okay? When this is zero, the determinant is zero, and so I'm in a kinematic singularity. But the problem is, how do I understand when this is zero? The first one, the draw is very easy. It's this one, okay? Theta three is equal to zero, is this one. And actually you can verify that joint two and three are a two link planar robot. And this is the same singularity as the planar, very easy. For the other singularities, defined as shoulder singularities, uh, someone made uh, a nice work and it's not difficult of course and said okay look you are in a singular configuration every time your end effector is in this lie in this segment okay now may I ask you from the linear velocity which component cannot be achieved in this configuration and then we we can stop for today now you should visualize the three joint and apply an instantaneous velocities to the three joint try to imagine what the end effector is doing and just try to understand where you are not able to go If I move uh, the first joint, what is the instantaneous linear velocity of the end effect? This is just a matter of initiation. It's not. Uh, it's not physics. 
is just imagination. You move the first joint. This one. Uh, so, this one. Move means you apply a velocity in that direction. This point here. Where does it go? It's fixed. It's fixed. This is the robot. You are moving this one here, and it stays here. Okay. So I I, I cannot I'm not able to do it, but yeah, this, this is more or less the. So for a, an instantaneous velocity of j1 this is fixed okay and if i move this instantaneously well i can write exactly the 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 the, the column jacobian is going here and for this one is here actually Still, this is a planner, so I know a planner to link robot uh, in a non-singular configuration for these two, those two. So, where what is the velocity that is missing? I draw it now, projected on the plane where What is the velocity component that you cannot achieve? You can go here with this one. You can go here with this one. By probably properly combining those two, you can reach any linear velocity on this plane. Rotating this one, you won't affect the end effect velocity. What is missing? We are missing the direction going out from the plane. So in three-dimensional, this direction here. So we are losing mobility. In this case, it is clear. But you can notice that it's very difficult to isolate the kinematic singularities if for a very simple structure of this one, so three degrees of freedom, I already have uh, mathematically, okay, mathematically, this is a line, but practically is a segment. And all the points in the segment are affected by this issue. Okay. Okay, now it's 11, you have to move to your class. So I need to stop uh, here and uh, uh, if you have any question, feel free. Uh, do you have a lesson now, the uh, Magistral Informatica? Kishan? Eh? OK, ma è sempre caldo dopo di me, quindi le due, tutte e due giorni. No? Perché ieri, perché ieri, OK. Eh, se, avete, se avete domande, sto qua, altrimenti fatemi intanto interrompere la registrazione.